well, here's the moment of truth, guys. Uh, this is the Valvoline Restore and Protect results. Uh, this is the oil sample that you guys have been waiting literally months upon months upon months for. And what we wanted to do is we want to do a catch can sample versus a crankcase sample so I can actually show you guys and demonstrate by via lab results what an actual catch can actually does. So, and how beneficial it can be for your system if you don't run one. Now, not everybody needs to run one, but it actually is very beneficial. This is the oil at I think 5,000 miles. Let's see here. Okay, anyway, this is the oil at 5,000 miles. If you go down the list here, there's no abnormal wear metals, everything's normal. Silicon's low, sodium's low, magnesium, 414 parts per million left. Molybdenum is 197, which at 5,000 miles is still reading 197. That's pretty decent. That's really good. Um, calcium is still good within range. Zinc and phosphorus are still looking good. This is not a performance oil. This is just, you know, a good oil. And then we look at the acid number nothing there base number a and b and we didn't do that we wanted to do oxidation that's what we wanted to do okay so here less than 0.1 percent water no fuel dilution that it could pick up the soot astm is 0.09 oxidation value is 21.51 we need to know what a virgin sample is now so we can compare at 5,000 miles. This is the most important number of all of this. Is that oxidation value, 21.51. Now, if we knew what a virgin analysis was from this company, we could compare in 5,000 miles to say, let's just say this was like oxidation value of 17 when it was virgin, but at 5,000 miles, it's only moved up four points to 21. Well, this is pretty... A, a, a decent oil you can probably run it a little bit longer and not have to worry about it doing any damage if you really wanted to even though i wouldn't run it past 5,000 miles you could but if it was at 17 and at 5,000 miles this thing shot up to like 40 well you might want to consider backing the oil interval down to like 4,000 or you know 3,000 and then checking there to see because once they start shooting up real high like that it means the oil's breaking down and it's not doing its job anymore so now let's move to, and they give you these attention codes. This is the crankcase sample, it says normal. If you notice this one says caution because this came from the catch can. Um, again, wear metals, pretty low. The wear metals are gonna be lower here than they are in the catch can just for the simple fact that um, this comes from a can, you know. It's not a. Uh, it's not from the internal to the uh, of the engine. So and these numbers are very low. All normal, normal, normal. Magnesium two seventy six in the catch can. Molybdenum one sixty three in the catch can. Two hundred eighty one in the catch can. Phosphorus four sixty. Zinc four forty one. Pretty impressive that you still get those numbers in fuel diluted oil that's in the catch can. And then if you move over here. You look at your viscosity index. So this was the crankcase viscosity index, 9.92, still good, still healthy. You look at this one, they've got it blued out as a little bit of a warning here. Hey, it's starting to break down here, it's falling out of range. And then if you look over here at fuel, it's actually got abnormal, you know, fuel contamination. And the soot load is a little bit higher here and the oxidative value is 21.08 so what I'd like to point out here is there is clearly a difference between there's clearly a difference between crankcase and catch can and I feel like this Valvoline Restore and Protect is doing extremely well now I've got another sample that I'm ready to pull here soon and we'll compare it to this catch can and crankcase and we'll see 
Has anything changed? Has anything gotten better? Um, yeah. So that's got 5,000 miles on it. This is going to have close to 5,000 miles on it, ish, I think. Um, and let me just leave a little disclaimer here. If you're using Valvoline Restore and Protect, and you've went on the internet searching for information about whether or not you should use it, you're going to see sometimes people have negative uh, things to say about it. They're going to be like, um, oh, it caused my my engine to have more noise or my VCT solenoids to to stop working properly because it was actually breaking down so much sludge so fast that it got into my screens and it blocked this and it blocked that. Here's how, if you're really worried about that and you have an extremely contaminated application that you're going to use Valvoline Restore and Protect in, here's how you mitigate that when you go to the store to get your oil filter and you get the valvoline restore and protect oil don't go get the most expensive filter on the market go get like a super tech filter or something like that basic so you're not spending a lot of money and put the valvoline restore and protect change your oil put that filter on there and write it about 2,000 miles at a thousand miles whatever you want get a couple of those filters um i, I would say i'd give it 2,000 miles Pull the filter off, cut it open. I'll leave some links for the tools down below that you can use to cut the filter open. It's an actual oil filter cutting tool. And look at it. Look at the, the mesh inside the oil filter so you can get an idea on whether or not it's being plugged up. Do it at 2,000 miles, then do it at 3,000 miles. Do it at 4,000 miles. Do it at 5,000 miles. Get an idea on what's going on with your vehicle by cutting that filter open with that tool to figure out, man, this Valvoline Restored and Protect is really working but I'm gonna have to change my filter more often because it is really working that much that I need to have a new filter on it every 2,000 miles or 3,000 miles while I'm running this stuff because my engine internally is extremely dirty. There's ways to get around it, especially if the product works that well. You just have to be a little bit more cautious on your oil changes. It's working very good for me. Thanks guys, be blessed.